So as you're driving east along Nine Mile, this is at Rebel Road, before you get to Beulah. And there you have the brand new Beulah Middle School. And there is your new Beulah Middle School. Just getting ready to do a media tour. Okay, your name again? Marietta McCaskill. Okay. M-A-R-I-E-T-T-A-M-C-C-A-S-K-I-L-L. -L. I'm the assistant principal. And I'm here to give you a tour today. So let me give you a few facts first. First of all, this school is 205,000 square feet. It costs $45 million, and it was built with the half-cent sales tax. Okay. It does. It will go to capacity of 1,200 students. Immediately or eventually? No, no. Eventually, it can go to 1,200 students. Um, we have a lot of safety and security measures that you've been able to see already as you tried to enter the campus um, that I could point out to you, but we won't <laughs> for security <laughs> reasons. Um, so we're going to go ahead and start our tour. Right now, we're in the admin suite, and as you can see, when you walked in, you had to be buzzed in. Um, the way that it's designed is you could be buzzed into the front office or if um, need be, you could be buzzed into the main part of the school. In the admin suite, we do have um, your administrators as well as guidance counselors and data specialists in this area of the school. Okay. Um, the way the school was also designed is that we have immediate access to the upstairs through the admin area if need be. So our first stop is to down towards the gym. Sure. We, can, we can take you guys down towards the gym. So let's go this guy. This is our guidance to the area um, where our guidance secretary and counselors will be. All of the lighting here in the school is LED lighting, and it is all motion sensors. Every area of the school has walk-off um, walk carpets with the bear imprinted on it. This is our um, elective wing, and so here we have our 3D and 2D art rooms. <laughs> we also have rooms for uh, occupational therapy, physical therapy, speech therapy, as well as uh, resources and conference rooms. All the classrooms are security padded? Yes, every single classroom has a key code entry. So as we turn this way, this is where our gymnasium is. Um, they're not done with all of the things that they're going to be putting on the, uh, the walls and stuff, graphics and everything. But as you can see, we have very easy access from the parking lot into our gymnasium as well as our track. So hmm. they're very in close proximity to each other. And this is good for parents coming and going. We don't have to have a lot of people spread out over our campuses. So in our gym, As you can see, we are the first middle school to have ceiling fans. So uh, these fans are designed to handle balls and, and other types of obstacles being thrown <laughs> at it, as well as help circulate the air in the gym. We also probably have the best sounding gym of any school in the district. Uh, they've done an excellent job with the sound system here at the school, and we will be uh, turning that on in a few hours when we do our open house.
And this is uh, volleyball, basketball, both directions. Yes, and we do have a drop-down screen to divide. So if we had um, several PE classes in here that were doing two different activities, they could drop the screen down to divide it. And the uh, band, the stands move back or recede? Yes, sir, they okay. sure do. They roll right back in. We also are very fortunate that our equipment room for PE um, goes to the gym, but there's also access to the outside to the track. So it's easy to move the high jump mats and um, other track equipment that we need to get in and out of the school. Okay. Where did uh, bears come from? When um, the school was being built, we put out a survey to the teachers, the current students that were at Woodham, as well as the feeder elementary schools that would be coming here. And so everybody had voice and choice, and we left it open, and we narrowed it down, and then we voted again, and the Bears won, which happened to go along with the theme of the school that the architect um, had come up with, which is the park. And I will point out um, different things in the school that will show you that park theme. Team colors are black and gray? Black, gray, and dark blue. So the greens outside are no relation to school colors? Correct. It has to do with the park theme. Oh, okay. So most of the students here are going to be relocated from Woodham? Uh, One-third of Woodham's student body um, it has been um, rezoned for this school. Okay. And the others are going where to Ransom or? Uh, mostly to Ferry Pass and Workman. Oh, okay. And a few to Bellevue. Okay. But th so this is not going to be full to begin with, as you said earlier, but it no, will grow sir. as Beulah grows. Well, and the part of that is because students who were already in 7th and 8th, in 6th grade or 7th grade at other middle schools, when the rezoning occurred, they gave those parents the choice to drive their children to the school they've already been attending, which I understand as a parent, you know, if your child's comfortable and happy at that school, as long as they um, drive them, they can go to those schools. Okay. So here we have our robotics lab. Oh, my son will be all over this. Yes, this is our <laughs> pre-engineering for middle school. So this side is the classroom side where the students will be receiving instruction. And on the other side is the lab where they'll be constructing different things. The good thing is, is that some kids can be working in there, some can be working in here, and the teacher can see them through both sides. One thing I do want to point out to you is that in this school, and uh, there are bathrooms in every classroom, so we have a hallway that connects you to your suite mate, and there are two bathrooms um, connected to each classroom. So it's like a, um, uh, not Jack and Jill, but like, I mean, um, yeah, sort kind of. of. Yes. And so we have bathrooms that both classrooms would share. Okay. We are also so they don't, there's not a common one out in the hall that everybody goes to. There's no so there's more safety for, and more control, essentially. There's no reason for a child to leave the room. Wow. Really. Um, this is also the connected resource room or office space that two teachers will share. This is between every single classroom. So these are sort of like pods, in a sense. I mean, I don't know what you call them, but well, I'm sure there's an educational term, but... We, we've been calling them resource rooms because the teachers will be go, using this I mean, for their I mean, like the whole, area. like... Uh, the concept. Yeah, yeah. We ha the way we have the school... Do you know, is it okay if we take pictures and include the students? I'm going to the parents. Yes, he's, well, he, those are his children, and he's the parents. So I'm sure he would be more than happy. <laughs> it's all good. Um, so the way the school was designed was that we have our academy elective wing... And then all the other wings are divided up by grade level. Okay. And then teachers are paired. So um, right now we have IT or pre-engineering here and agri-science over here, and I'll show you the agri-science side in a minute. But in the main academic hallways, you have ELA teachers, English language arts teachers, sharing. So they're sharing a common space, and it's easier for them to collaborate or Let's say they're doing a project and they need to switch kids or mm -hmm. they need to, you know, so it's easier for them to do those project-based learning things or one teacher might be stronger in helping certain students with some sort of remediation and another one might be stronger with some sort of advanced academics and they can move easily between the two classrooms. Cool. So let me show you some more of the pre-engineering lab. We are slowly moving into the lab. 
We have 3D printers that we got um, towards the end of last year. All of the furniture in the school is movable, and that includes in these labs. And even a wash station? Yes. And then around the corner is just a closet for a lot of storage and stuff in there. And then when we go over to the agri-science side... <laughs> Okay, that's what I thought. Yes. Are you, the, are you the robotics teacher? Yes. Oh, okay. What's your name? Uh, Kenneth Hackinson. Kenneth Hackinson? Yes. All right. You excited to be in the new facility? Absolutely. <laughs> um, this is absolutely amazing. The facilities are top notch. Um, we're going to have seven 3D printers. Seven? Um, seven, correct. Oh, my God. Um, There's only two over at um, Brown Bars, I think, maybe? I'm not Maybe sure. Maybe even only one? Uh, but we're <laughs> so. going to use them because when we design the robots, the kids, this isn't, we do some of the Lego stuff, but the kids fabricate everything, the wheels, the tires, mm -hmm. the heads, the arms. Um, and we teach AutoCAD, so we teach them to draw in SolidWorks and Tinkercad and AutoCAD, and then they can 3D print the pieces that they design, and then they can use them on the robot. And we compete in the best robotics at UWF. Mm -hmm and whip on, up on high schools and other schools. And then we also do the sea perch underwater robots. And so the kids use everything they make and take it home. Where do you teach right now? Um, I taught at Woodham. Woodham, under okay. The amazing Miss McCaskill, Mr. Taylor. <laughs> um, and uh, now I'm here at Beulah, and I'm, I'm excited to be here. Cool. Nice yeah. to meet you. Nice to meet you. You guys are welcome to look. Um, those are uh, aviation simulators that we'll be using. And the kids, the program here, as part of the engineering, we do ground robots, underwater robots, air robots. We have drones that we can use. And then we have the simulators. And then over here, we have a whole bunch of the robots from past competitions. Oh, uh-huh. Um, some of these are in pieces for transport. But the robotics competition take place on a battlefield that's... 24 feet by 24 feet by 24 feet. And then we shrunk the battlefield down so they could practice on little ones. And in this room, you'll see it'll fill up when we do a quadrant of the battlefield because it'll be 12 by 12. And you'll see a big thing that we're dealing with and moving. And so that's why it takes a lot of space. Yeah. And open space to be configured how you need it is invaluable. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And the underwater competitions, um, things that sound simple are not. This is one of the things that we use. Uh, we drop this down the pool in 14 feet of water, and the robots have to slide the disc over. <laughs> now, it sounds simple for you and me above water, but to get the um, robots to take it and have the robots go underwater and move this is With that kind of fine motor control sophistication. Correct. And then these big hoops um, we use. The underwater robots have to go through um, these hoops. There's eight of them. Hmm. And some of them are like this, some of them are like this, some of them are like that. And they have to navigate through the eight and then come back through. Um, and uh, the kids steer. The kids design them. The kids steer them. The kids build them. Prepare them. Once and this is all part of BEST? Or well, this various is aspects of robotics. Sea perch. Oh, Best okay. Is the, is the, these, these ones here, right? Through. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then we also do Lego first, and we build the Legos and compete. So right. the kids, mm -hmm. it's like seasons of sports. There's right. the best season, sea perch season, Lego season. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they drive them. The kids take them like water. Yeah. And the controllers, I can show you, it's like an Xbox controller, PlayStation controller. The kids program the controller. We get the stick doesn't know anything. You bring it to the kids program. So we've just hired a brand new agri science teacher who will be um, taking over here. And she is planning on bringing a lot of interesting things here. <sighs> okay, well, out the back door <laughs> is our um, is our big greenhouse, and we also have a covered space back there as well. I didn't um, see the sign. 
<laughs> no, they locked it. I don't have keys yet. We could probably go out the back door of um, the robotics room. Yes, and see the if you'd like to see the. Yeah, I'm curious. Um, so are they learning in streams or are they? No, they can. They sign up for an academy. Oh, okay. So pre-engineering is an academy. Agri in middle science. school, they're doing academies. Yes. Wow. Yes. Sir. Okay. We have um, culinary arts. We have pre-engineering. We have informational technology and agri science. Okay. So our agri science program is um, about to start expanding since we are here. So I'm just going to hold this door open so that way we don't actually come up. Um, this is the covered area where the students will be able to work. And they'll also be able to go out to the greenhouse and um, grow plants and stuff there. Here we are at the site. Oh man, it's uh, 20 degrees warmer in here just by walking in. sorts of interesting <laughs> agri-science things out there. There's also talk of us um, possibly starting with some chickens. Um, we'll see oh, how that how that me. progresses. My, my, my son's going to come here now. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, our program will feed into Tate High School, and Tate High School has a very um, large agri-science program, and they're looking... Did, did you just say the agri-science program is going to feed into Tate High School? <laughs> yeah. Our agri-science pro program will Our feed into Tate High School's <laughs> program Actually, to help a, theirs keep growing. Will you be making uh, enough crops and all where you can take the food to other schools? At Woodham, we had agri-science at Woodham, and what our agri-science teacher was doing um, there was growing food, and then he would take the food to the man of food bank. And so he took lots of collards and cabbage and stuff that the kids grew, and we took it to the Mana Food Bank. This past year, the kids also um, grew lemon trees and papaya trees and sold them to the staff to make a little bit of money. So our new agri-science teacher, I'm sure, is going to do something along the same lines of, of doing things to keep the program going. But we're going to add FFA this year, hmm. and we've not had that in the past. So will be one of the middle schools with an FFA program. What will FFA bring to the school? Oh, it's going to bring opportunities for our children. They're going to be able to do competitions and speech and writing. They're going to be able to compete in different areas with um, plants and growing different, doing experiments and growing all sorts of vegetables and flowers and all that stuff and taking them to competitions. And my understanding is, is that they have different levels of it. They have the local chapters and the state chapters and then the national chapters. And from what I understand, we've had some students go very far beyond high school in the FFA. So it's a good program to, to give these kids the opportunity to, to grow outside this area. Y'all are going to get a release probably tomorrow morning. Tonight the school is starting with three that new academies, and one of them is an academy. Okay. Is that tonight? Is the regular meeting tonight? I thought yes. it was tomorrow. It's tonight? Okay. Three new meetings tonight. Three, basically three focuses. Sheldon, get that stuff from you. I'm trying to get it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Kind of be the only way around a bunch of new students, you know. Right? It's going to be new for everybody. The one thing that is interesting is that the majority of the staff came here from Woodham, mm -hmm. and Woodham staff, for the most part, was made up. Woodham staff, for the most part, was made up of Brentwood and Wedgwood when they closed. So this staff knows all about how to merge together. And so now this year we get, instead of the staff concentrating on merging together, it's going to be helping the children hmm. merge together because we're bringing different communities together. Is it one level all the way across? This 
um, wing it's, is one level. The front was two, though, right? Until we get to here. Okay. And then it is two levels. Okay. Um, this is the only wing where the stairs that come down exit to the outside. Okay. So we will go up the stairs over here by the Innovation Center. I will show you the rest of the wing of um, electives, and then we'll do the Innovation Center. I will take you to a science lab. And then we'll come downstairs to the cafeteria and the music suite. So this area was designed as an area for students to hang out and read and, um, you know, lounge around, lounge if, they, around if they have the time. That's right. Is this a uh, performance area or? That is another area where students can um, sit and hang out. There's also going to be a display area for the Innovation Center. This is our culinary arts room. And we do have some food out because we're going to be cooking out after we <laughs> open this media door. But um, this is our new culinary arts lab. And we do have one of our lab stations has been designed for handicap accessibility. Tell us again what room this is because I was. Oh, I'm sorry. This is the culinary arts room. We have a culinary arts academy. And if you ever have the opportunity to eat their food, they do a great job. Uh, if you come over here. Besides joining our personal development room, which is a seventh grade required course, you can also stand here and watch a track meet. <laughs> which, <laughs> which means I can stand here and work and watch track meets at the same time. What type, what type of sports will be offered here? Um, the same sports that all middle schools have, which is basketball, volleyball, track and field, and swimming. We will also have archery and a running club. So if you come across here, you will see we have our personal development room. Oh my goodness, all these boxes. <laughs> Apologize for the boxes. We're working on it. <laughs> this is Molly Martin. She's our um, personal development teacher. Hi. For seventh grade, all seventh graders need to have personal development, so it is a required course and in what, school. what is involved in personal development? Actually, if you look right back here, I've got a lot of it. We cover everything from manners to family to tobacco, drugs, and alcohol, human sexuality, how to set a table, food and nutrition. Um, it just it prepares them for job careers, and we even learn how to design a house. How to do it, interviews. How to do interviews. So it's, it's home ec, health, and life skills. Everything. All combined into one. For those of us a little older. Yes. So tell, tell us about the Wheel of Misfortune you got back there. Well, that's one of the games that we play when we are doing our drug, tobacco, and alcohol unit. And what the kids do is they have to spin it, and then whichever one it lands on, they have to answer the question that I ask them about that particular drug, tobacco, or alcohol. Um, Molly is also our Capturing Kids Hearts coordinator for our school. We are a Capturing Kids Hearts school, and so she does the training every year for that program. Yeah, well, that what is that? Doing. Capturing Kids Hearts is by far the best program that I've ever been through in my life. It actually changed my life. Um, it begins by really getting to know the kids, focusing on them, getting to know what they need, meeting their needs on a personal level. You start off your day every day with good things, and you take five or ten minutes. By the end of the week, every child has to share something. Um, you end every class with a launch because we want to send them on their way in a positive, with a positive light. So you just give them a quote or an encouraging word. Um, we make social contracts rather than rules. So as a class, we sit down and we come up with 
the um, way we want to treat each other and the way we'll handle conflict. And then what you do is when something comes up, you refer to the social contract and say, hey, now remember we talked about we were going to be responsible in here and we were going to be kind to one another. And so um, we just refer to that and that's how we handle the conflict within the room. We do it as a faculty to model. Mm -hmm. And um, the next step in Capturing Kids Hearts is actually what I'm working on right now. It's teen leadership. And it's just taking a moment to teach the kids how to take control and be leaders in their community. And, and this is a system that's used school-wide? Yes. 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 And, and the leadership is actually going to be offered as a class um, this year. To, um, we'll, we'll have one or two classes of leadership. Hmm. And we greet everybody at the door with a handshake and ask them how they're doing. Um, Mr. Taylor and I model that at all faculty meetings when the staff comes in. We greet them all. We do two minutes of good news every time we have a faculty meeting. So um, it's it's not just it, it is a part of our life. It is not it's a just lifestyle, right? yes. It's not. Um, it's really a lifestyle. And the shaking hands part is so great because immediately you know what type of day that child's having mm -hmm. the minute you shake their hand. And so it's so important. And I always tell mine, because sometimes they'll want to do a fist bump or a high five, and I'll tell mine, first you have to shake my hand professionally because that's what we're learning. Mm -hmm. And then I'll do a high five or a fist bump or something like that. But that just gives you that insight into that child's life right that moment. And if you take the time, a lot of people are worried about the time that this particular program takes in a classroom. But when you take that time, you have their hearts. And when you have their hearts, they'll learn. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you actually can accomplish more in a shorter period of time once you capture their hearts. So we're going to continue on and I'm going to show you the business. Thank you, Molly. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Great eye contact, too. <laughs> yeah. So these are the business labs. They're both the same. But this is where our IT business labs are. So one is sixth grade, one is seventh grade, and then the eighth grade one is located in the Innovation Center. That's how you felt we had. Lead with the nose, Dave. Uh, yeah. I like that new school smell. Yeah. <laughs> I teach This is our innovation center. It is probably everybody's favorite room in the school. Yeah, you can't imagine you feel like why. You're in a tree house <laughs> um, when you're in here. So all the furniture in here is movable. Um, we have two classrooms that you can see are glass, so that way kids can be working on projects and not disturbing other kids who are in here reading. Also, for good visibility, you can see what the children are doing in that classroom in case they're working in small groups. And you can also look out over the parking lot and the rest of the school grounds and the front of the school. And it's just a real peaceful, peaceful kind of place. It's, it's uniquely designed. We have TVs in both the project rooms, so if children were working on a project, they could screen up to the TV and, and work on their projects up there as a group. All you're going to do is make all the other teachers jealous. You know that, right? <laughs> well, uh, hopefully they'll want to come in here and use the Innovation Center quite often. I mean at other schools, too. Oh, schools? yes, mm -hmm. yes. Yes. So. Did you notice, I mean, these two big, giant... And they're very what are the, quiet. What are the, um, if you go in here, you can see that it's very. That's yeah, a it's very sound that deadening, we use right? To teach boys how to tie neckties. All right. So that's one of like our maker spaces. But this morning I pulled up and he was facing the windows and his hand was up and I was like, oh, he's waiting. <laughs> <laughs> so these are the cool lights that you see from down below yes. when you're walking in. You look up, you can see them. Yes, exactly. Yeah, it's really sound dampening in here, which is great. So especially in here. Oh, yeah. yeah. And those screens are up there for protection, of course, but also it helps to um, not make it so hot in here. It diffuses the sunlight a little mm -hmm. bit. Because this is where we'll get the sun. This is indirect. But that's because, the, 
because we're facing west. As you can see, towards the back on the other side, we have our professional library, and that's where teachers can go back. They still have views of the library, but um, that's just a quiet space um, on the other side. I'll show you our media classroom. Corby, I'm bringing some, some people in. They want to check out our new oh, man, I see. media. Yeah, look at this. Green screen room. <laughs> <laughs> so this is where we're going to have our media productions mm -hmm. is in here. Which is new for us because we do not have that at Woodham. So. Will you be doing a campus-wide newscast here? The hope is that we will be able to start one. If um, nothing else, we would start it as a before school club type thing. And then if, as interest builds, we can build a class. we have different types of seating set up. So the benches that we have out there, down towards the end, that's near the locker room door. So when kids come out, they can sit in those areas. Mm -hmm. We also have benches right here where a teacher can bring a class out and they can sit outside and work in groups or you know, conduct class out here. This, this is set up in a U-shaped here and straight benches over there. Each wing has like I said, a different, and I'll show you the... So that was the forest wing that we were in over here, or which, which wing That's was the this? elective wing. Electives, okay. Yes, yes. Sorry. Our, our hope, and, and that we haven't really done it yet, but our hope is to name, the have the kids name the hallways after um, different national parks. Oh, okay. Uh, this is the eighth grade wing. It's closed right now. We're not um, going down that one. It feels so different. This is the... Well, it's like the concrete instead of the wood flooring out in the admin. There's another outdoor area, okay. and you can yeah. see um, our PE facilities back there. Some more PE facilities. So we have the track over there, the gym over there. Straight is ahead, that the, we is have that the, the footprint of the of the school property is all the way back to the back there? Oh yes, sir. Oh my God, you have an enormous amount of room. Yes, sir. So you can see the tennis courts. There are six tennis courts. There are eight basketball courts, which you really can't see very well from here. And then we will have two to three sand volleyball courts back there. Straight ahead are the kickball fields. Sand um, volleyball courts in a middle school. Yes, That's sir. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I, I, played volley I played schools, volleyball, so I'm it. here in Escambia, do? Yes. Mm -hmm. huh. When I was at Bailey, we built some courts there. This is more outdoor seating. This is the center stairwell to the campus. So that stairwell would be mostly for electives in eighth grade. This one would be for seventh grade. And then our one down there would be for sixth grade. This is our seventh grade wing. And I'm going to show you a typical classroom and then the science lab, and then we'll be able to go downstairs. Well, Molly's room was a typical classroom. I don't know if we have... Mr. Bubbly, is your room set up? Um, we're set up, but there's still some boxes there. So this is um, a typical classroom. All the furniture is movable. The tables slide um, on the carpet. We have large square ones. This is... For kids who might need to spread out, or maybe for children in wheelchairs, mm -hmm. this is um, handicap accessible. We have the high chairs, and we have the low chairs, and it's all kind of move, movable, mix and match type furniture. Mm -hmm. We have the three TV screens, the largest being the one that the teacher would probably use the most to um, do whole group instruction. The lights do move and dim, 
according to whichever TV they need to use. So hmm. our staff hasn't been trained on the lights, but let's say Mr. Mobley was going to be up here teaching and he had his TV on, he could turn this crossbar off and it would make it so the children could see the TV better. Really? And again, you've got the shared office for two teachers. You've yes. Got shared access to bathrooms. Every 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 room is in a paired situation like that, right? And the, the cubbies, the teachers are going to. Do you notice there's not a traditional teacher desk in here? Okay. Instead, you'll see them. I guess they're still downstairs, but they have these. Yes, the podiums, podiums. the rolling podiums. Teachers oh. do not have desks in classrooms hmm. yeah. because we want the teachers up and moving and participating with the children. Guiding them. The other nice thing about both new schools is the attention to storage, mm -hmm. especially like in art rooms or near the makerspace rooms. They've, it's all planned right into it. So, this is in the seventh grade lab. And as you can see, they also have the TV set up. Um, I believe there's going to be a camera installed so that the teacher's demonstrating. It will project to the TVs. Hmm. Okay. Okay, I'm dying to ask because it's so atypical. Why pentagons? Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. I know what your answer is going to be. on the second floor. So the science teachers would take turns at that grade level using this room. When the school does go to capacity, there will be three science teachers. The other science teacher would be would be the sweet mate to the lab, so they would be located on that side. Currently, we have two science teachers per grade level, and they're located across the hall. Mr. Mobley is our science department chair, if any of you have any questions for him um, in regards to science. <laughs> I thought I saw, these are just water though, not gas, right? Cool. Not, not Bunsen burners, okay. Why, do why pentagons? We don't do why. <laughs> <laughs> no. It's basic chemicals in seventh grade. Vinegar, your basic salt. household salt. <laughs> salt. We barely, rarely get outside of those chemicals. The, the highest we probably go would be lab grade hydrochloric acid to make a battery, mm -hmm. but we wouldn't go beyond that. Uh, traditionally, in this room, the way it's set up, this shape is the best shape to keep from. It's the best shape because everyone can utilize their workspace. And then the sinks are in the center. Traditionally, the sinks are off on the corner. Mm -hmm. So everyone can clean up very quickly. And to be able to Chromecast, I can Chromecast from that one to this one from my classroom here. So simultaneously, I can teach my lesson, walk right over here, and everything is on this screen. That is the beauty of it as well. We have a vented hood that is here. This vented hood is where if we were mixing some chemicals or mixing something that's there and have a sliding glass that comes down, your vent switch is there as well. This hood is state of the art. The lighting in here, as she stated earlier, I can control the lighting. We can dim if I wanted to do a demonstration where I was actually showing something that had fire or chemical reaction changes. This room can darken, which is beautiful. It is just amazing to be able to teach in a state-of-the-art classroom. Now, is this all designed to interact with the Chromebooks as well? Is that part of the way this is built to work? or? Yes, sir. Um, we're going to be on a Chromecast system, so I'm not exactly certain as to how that will work. I will have an air writer we're, iPad. We're going to be doing... Um, Chromecast is not secure okay. um, from the Chromebook, so the way the students would be able to demonstrate their projects is that we will have um, wires from the TV that they can plug their Chromebooks into in order to cast onto the TVs. We will not be doing it wirelessly okay. um, because Chromecast is not a secure system. The teachers will be able to do it wirelessly from iPads. Um, and that type of thing because we're going to be hooking up Apple TVs, which are more secure. Okay. Um, they can't be... Um, 
hijacked is the only so, word I can think so of. So the, the instructors work on Apple platform. But the, the, the instructors will work through the Apple TV. Okay. Um, and through their iPads, but they also have Chromebooks. Okay. So they will be able to cast from their Chromebooks, but the students will not be able to. They will have to plug in until we can figure out how to secure it so that they're not jumping into other people's mm -hmm. casting ability. It's just, uh, it's so new that it's something that, that Google has to work on. All right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So what we're going to do now is we are going to... Thank you. We're going to head down to the center stairwell. And... We will look at the cafeteria and the music suite. So the areas that we are taking you to are the areas that are going to be open tonight for parents to see okay. um, in the open. As you can see, remember I told you about the forest theme. Uh, these are actually dots, pixelated pictures of trees embedded oh, okay. in all the glass. So at the end of um, each uh, area, you'll see that um, the trees. And where, where did the forest theme come from again? The architects. Okay. This seems much bigger than a 1,200 student school. It just seems it expansive. Seems like it, but I think it's because of the fact that the classrooms are bigger, mm -hmm. and the bathrooms and the teacher resource rooms are in them. Mm, instead of being seems... collected in one place. Exactly. Okay. So there's far more of them in the entire school by number. So this is our outdoor eating area, where teachers can bring their students outside to eat if they'd like. Again, you have another view of the heading towards the back of the campus. And then in here is our innovation center. Oh, we didn't see this the other day. I mean, not innovation center, cafeteria, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh. I got to run off. This is the cafeteria. And all of our furniture has just come in, but I don't know what Mr. Taylor's doing in there with those people, so we're not going to interrupt him, but... Um, we will be able to seat a whole entire grade level at one time for lunch. Uh, we also kept with the theme of high and low tables, rectangle tables, booths, movable chairs. That theme it has been carried throughout the cafeteria. You will also, which I know you can't see it, but the round um, tables have an imprint of the bear on the tables themselves. These are our bistro tables, so I'm sure these will be a hot commodity for several students wanting to sit a little higher up. In the cafeteria. That's what a cool table is. That's right. I think what we're actually going to do with the bistro tables at Woodham, we had started a new tech zone. So um, students who want to put their technology up can sit with any other student who wants to do the same. So we'll have some sort of box or something, and they can sit together instead of sitting with their class. And it became very popular at Woodham in order for them to sit with their friends that are in other classes. And I think our thoughts are that we are going to start with the bistro tables being the no tech zone tables. So now I'm going to take you to the music suite. What's this? Just space under the stairwell or yes. something? Okay. Mm -hmm. And we cannot store anything under there for Yeah, there, every floor, everywhere we go is a little bit different. There's the wood finish, there's the concrete finish, there's this. This is a special flooring called Marlolium, and it is um, somewhat, they say it's somewhat softer, but at the same time it's more durable. Mm -hmm. It does not require stripping or waxing. Hmm. So it just requires um, a good scrubbing, and so it's easier to maintain. 
So, back in here is our music suite, and we have, that's probably the rest of the media, <laughs> we have orchestra, and I'll show you just each room. This is the orchestra room, and each of the three music suite rooms has access to the outside where they can practice outside. They also have separate practice rooms which have cameras inside of them which will be displayed to the TVs. And so as the teacher is teaching or instructing and there's kids practicing in the practice rooms, the teacher can monitor those students in the practice room. The outside gates um, are secured so that people cannot get into the um, little music garden area. Oh, I'm sorry, the piano spell thing. <laughs> That actually came from Morton. Can mm -hmm. Yes. The radio guys saw that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Acoustically, it's, it's quite the... So the next room I'm going to show you is the chorus. Oh, yeah, I did see it in passing, yeah. but I didn't go up much. There's the chorus. Banded. You've got full height for basses, this right. little lazy Susan guy for cellos, hmm. and then, or I guess we have more cellos in there. If you ever drop the music program, this will make a great animal show. That was the comment. Was <laughs> if you lose one of your music programs, you could add vet science. That's what I was thinking. The kennels. Yeah. Yeah. Are y'all coming out? Yeah. Yes. Sir, yo, okay. <laughs> oh, you got the large one. <laughs> All right. What's up, Craig? How you doing, man? Hello there. Hi. <laughs> okay. Okay, so this is um, chorus. And they have um, a storage for their robes. Uh, they have two practice rooms, and they also have access to the outside. That seems to be a feature in the whole school is access to the outside. What's the reason? Well, that's reason? just for the art rooms and for the um, music suites are at, outside towards the front or areas where people could see. Otherwise, access is in between the buildings if they'd like it. Mm -hmm. um, it's supposed to be, again, that park theme, collaboration, indoors, outdoors um, type of thing, which is why we have the greens and the grays and stuff. Just so that you guys can see this, in each music room, they also have these nice music vaults for their sheet music. Mm. Expansive. They could have quite a collection yeah. um, in here. So I did want to show you that because not all schools have um, this this type of storage for their music. Yeah. Mostly the high schools, I think. You know somebody at a high school that would like that? <laughs> From Washington. Oh, he's a great band director. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Textbooks and and stuff because this is a nice massive storage area that they gave us. So as you can see from here, I can take you out to look at some of the uh, tables if you'd like to see the table with the bear on it. And then those are the rolling podiums that each teacher will have with those. So this is the um, table that has the barrel. And we have several of these round tables. It's the most well-lit, open school I have ever been in. The atrium school. It has won three awards no. already. Uh -uh. What's that? It's already won three awards. Um, one national award, correct? We, uh, we so. Yeah, we got three awards, yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. for, for what, do you remember? The design the school. Okay. And one was for safety. Okay. Safety features that are designed into it. I think one was like a lead school or energy efficient type of school as well. Yeah. 
And then the kitchen's over here. Yes. So we can have four lines of students at one and two? Correct. We're going to have four lines coming through. And so the um, thought process is, is that, you know, each grade level would max out at 400. Um, and so that's how many students we can fit in the cafeteria. If we put the tables up and there's another storage area, we can fold the tables up and then put just the benches and the chairs out for parents for any type of music or play type productions. So these are the serving lines that we will have at the new school. Okay. Is One okay? thing I do like is that these warmers go through the walls. Oh, yeah. They're front so and back, right? They're front and back. So if somebody from the kitchen side could load, <laughs> and then they can unload on this side. Genius. Oh, I know, right? Who would not want to cook in this I kitchen? know. This is amazing. So this is pretty much the whole entire school. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, yeah. Is there anything, any questions that you guys, we can head towards the front, and if you guys think of any questions, I'll be more than happy to try to answer them for you. Um, or if there's a particular place that you have not seen, that you've thought about in the school that you would like to see. <laughs> So you said this was funded entirely from the uh, LOST? From the half-cent sales tax. From the half-cent sales tax, yes, right. $45 million. Um, their goal was to, I believe, save, the cost savings was, um, their goal was 2%. And I believe they hit that 2% mark or just like a nidge below it um, when building the school. Bathroom areas. You can see every single bathroom is the same in the school, no matter what. They're all the same. Um, they have epoxy, just like this seated area has epoxy, so it's easy to clean. Oh, okay, yeah. The school is the same. Okay. And so the epoxy goes up the walls and it has a real nice tile. And are, and all the bathrooms are single person, single? Yes. Okay. Every single bathroom. So there are no common or public, I mean, multi person, whatever. Except yeah. at the gym. That okay. That is the only place where you'll see gang bathrooms is at the gym. Okay. And that's just because of the vet sporting events. But otherwise, so yes, we have that really cool epoxy in certain places hmm. in school, but definitely hmm. in all the bathrooms. So, is there any um, questions, anything I didn't cover, anything I can help you with? Okay. It took three years to build the school. And, and the aftermath of the most recent shootings in the past year and a half or so, did you have to go back in? I don't go into detail because mm -hmm. you probably can't, but was there anything you had to go back in and redesign and, and rebuild because of that? No. No, absolutely not. This school has... Um, you could tell when you could pull up, you cannot get close to this building. It's impossible to get a car or a truck close to the building itself. Um, it was purposely designed that way. Um, and from start to finish, this school was started in October is when they had the groundbreaking ceremony, October of 16. And here it is um, June and, and we're, you know, done. So it's, it was about a little over 18, 20 months maybe to build the school from groundbreaking to now. Okay. 
Um, I don't think I got it earlier. Can you just give me the basics again of you know the name of the school, the mascot, how many students, how many classrooms? Sure. Yeah. Um, the school is Bueller Middle School. It is 205,000 square feet under one roof. It costs $45 million to build. Student capacity is 1,200. And the funding came from Lost? The, the funding came from the half cent sales tax. Yes, yeah. yeah. And the, um, there had been an ongoing question about the traffic and yes. across the street yes, and sir. kids going across and the design. Um, have there been any changes there? Have you been talking with FDOT about that? Or is that more not your purview because you're inside, or inside the walls? Well, um, the school district has somebody that works with FDOT as far as um, the future plans of the school and the roadway. So myself and Mr. Taylor are not directly involved with those. As far as the students that live across the street in Keystone, we are um, going to have a bus okay. that will pick those students up. It's just, it's too dangerous. And uh, to my knowledge, there has been no discussion of a walkover mm -hmm. for them. And I think that has to do with the expansion of the road that's right. eventually coming down the road. Right, once nine mile gets wider, maybe yes. you could talk about something like that. Correct. Thanks, Principal. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. Perfect.